by mid-year, 2020 was looking bleak for many Christmas tree farms. The country was nearly shut down thanks to the coronavirus disease, COVID-19. And tree growers in several regions were also dealing with drought. Things were rough. It didn't matter if you were growing your evergreens in Voluntown, Connecticut. We were hit with a, a major drought this year. We lost a lot of uh, small a lot of small, uh, fresh uh, new plantings all the way up until even uh, plantings that were three years ago were affected. Or in Minburn, Iowa. We were um, probably about seven to eight inches short by mid to late summer. Um, I did try to water my new seedlings that I had planted in April. It's after planting about 800 seedlings, uh, it takes a little while to get through them. So I ended up watering them twice, but even so we lost about 300 seedlings. And on top of that, growers feared the pandemic would mean customers wouldn't show. So many Americans were just staying put, sheltering at home. And changes would need to be made for those who did stroll through the groves. This year has been really kind of an upside down year. The uh, infection rates started skyrocketing in October. So then we had to make more readjustments accordingly to, for the safety of our workers and, of course, our customers. Uh, up until this point, we did have horse-drawn hay wagon rides. Um, but unfortunately, this year, we, uh, we felt that uh, we could not do that this year. I bring in some pre-cut trees from northern Minnesota to add to the, the trees that we grow because I can buy trees that I can't grow here. When COVID hit, it's like, are we even going to have a sale season? And I thought, I'm going to have to eat an awful lot of pre-cut trees because, you know, once you've got them cut, you've got a limited time to, to get them sold, and uh, they're not worth very much on the 26th of December. But just when it looked like the nation's growers were going to be facing year-end balances that made lumps of coal look good, a surprise arrived as Thanksgiving neared. Around that time, as Dr. Seuss might have said in a far better way, the growers paused and put a hand to their ears. And they did hear a sound rising over the fields. It started in low, and it started to grow. It was cars and trucks, lots of them, coming from afar, full of children, parents, and granny and gramps besides. Unofficially, uh, we uh, opened the weekend before Thanksgiving. We weren't planning on it, but there was people coming in and we couldn't hold them back. When we opened at 10 o'clock Friday morning, we had cars parked both directions from our lane about a quarter mile in each direction, uh, which we've never had before. And these mask-wearing visitors' sounds weren't sad. Their sounds sounded glad. Everyone in the grove, the tall and the small, was hunting without any sadness at all. COVID hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the tree growers with their boot-clad feet not even crunching in snow stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? The mask wearers came without grumbling. They came without pride. They came without the usual cocoa, cookies, or rides. And the tree families puzzled and puzzled till their puzzlers were sore. Then the growers thought of something they hadn't before. Maybe Christmas and other religious holidays, they thought, doesn't come with a roar. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. People really want to get out. They needed to get out, you know, and they can come outside and feel safer. Uh, and they had a chance to have a new experience. So we began to anticipate that we might have not just an average season, but it could be above average. I think people are very appreciative uh, more than ever this year. I think uh, with this, uh, this virus, I think is really actually taught, taught uh, us all a lot. And uh, uh, you know, uh, we can't take things for granted and we gotta be more thankful for the simple things in life. For Market to Market, I'm Colleen Bradford-Krantz.